Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on enthalpies of reaction. This is section 5.4. Now oftentimes when we're talking about changes in enthalpy or delta H, we're referring to our final minus our initial enthalpy. And oftentimes when we're talking about changes in enthalpy, we're going to be referring to a reaction or some type of physical process like a phase change. So enthalpy in terms of a reaction is known as the enthalpy of reaction. In this case, we take our delta H of reaction and it's going to be the enthalpy of your products minus the enthalpy of your reactants. This is called the enthalpy of reaction or sometimes called the heat of reaction. You may see it symbolized in that way. Now, an example of this would be if I took two moles of hydrogen gas reacted it with one mole of oxygen gas and formed two moles of water vapor. The enthalpy change when this happens is stated beside the chemical equation. It is a negative 483.6 kilojoules. The negative symbolizes that this is an exothermic reaction. So the coefficients represent the number of moles of reactants and products creating this type of energy change, this endothermic, sorry, exothermic reaction. When an enthalpy value is associated with a balanced equation, as we see here, we call this a thermochemical equation. Now there are some helpful guidelines about enthalpy in terms of reactions that are going to help us solve different problems in this chapter. The first one is that enthalpy is an extensive property meaning that it depends on the amount. So the magnitude of the change in enthalpy is proportional to the amount of reactant consumed in the process. For example, if we look here, if I have one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen gas, I release 840 kilojoules of heat energy. So my enthalpy change is negative 890 kilojoules. However, if I double the amount of my reactants and I have two moles of methane reacting with four moles of oxygen gas, I will release double the amount of energy. So your change in enthalpy is directly proportional or is proportional to your amount of reactants consumed in the process. Now the second guideline is that the change in enthalpy is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign for the reverse reaction. So for example, up top here, we have methane gas reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. But in this reaction down here, we have the opposite. Carbon dioxide gas reacting with water to produce methane gas and oxygen gas. And my change in enthalpy here is a positive 890 kilojoules. So it's just the opposite. It will be an endothermic process. And the third helpful <clears throat> guideline is that the change in enthalpy depends on the states of the reactants and the products. For example, if I was producing water in the gaseous phase, my change in enthalpy will be negative 802 kilojoules. However, if I was going to produce the product of H2O in liquid, phase, it would be in negative 890 kilojoules. We can talk more about why these are different next class. So if I were to have this thermochemical equation here, I have two moles of H2O in the liquid phase going through a phase change and creating two moles of H2O in the gaseous phase. So as we've said before, our delta H is going to be equal to H of the products minus H of your reactants. So when we do this out, we have our product, which is gaseous water, which up here we have as negative 802 kilojoules. We subtract from that our reactants, which was negative 890 kilojoules of heat being released. When we solve this, we get a negative 802 plus 890 giving you a positive 88 
kilojoules, and that reflects what we see here for our change in enthalpy. Now we can use these helpful hints when solving problems. So here's one problem from your book. We have two moles of magnesium reacting with one mole of oxygen gas producing two moles of magnesium oxide and there's our associated change in enthalpy here. It releases 1204 kilojoules. So let's go through this. Letter A. Is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Well that depends on our enthalpy change. It is negative so it is exothermic. And B. Calculate the amount of heat transferred when 3.55 grams of magnesium react at constant pressure. Now, according to our chemical equation, we have two moles of magnesium. We know that two moles of magnesium is going to be way more than 3.55 grams of magnesium because one mole of magnesium will be equivalent to magnesium's molar mass, which is 24.3 grams. If I only have 3.55 grams, that's about a seventh of that. So, what I'm going to do is relate energy in kilojoules to grams stoichiometrically. So this is what I start with, 3.55 grams of magnesium. I know that in order to relate things, I have to get it into moles. So for every one mole of magnesium, I'm going to have 24.30 grams of magnesium. This is the molar mass grams of magnesium cancel and for every one sorry for every two moles according to my balanced chemical equation here for every two moles of magnesium that I have to start with I'm going to release negative 1204 kilojoules so for every two moles of magnesium as my reactant I'm going to release 1204 kilojoules of energy and now I have units of energy that's what I wanted so I simplify and I get negative 87.9 kilojoules so that would be the answer to that problem that's how much heat was transferred when you only have 3.55 grams instead of around you know 48 grams which is what two moles of magnesium is now, letter C. How many grams of MgO are produced during an enthalpy change of negative 234 kilojoules? So you're going the, the opposite direction. So now you're starting with some heat output and you're trying to figure out how many grams of product are going to be produced if you release negative 234 kilojoules. So you want to relate your product to this energy. When every two moles of magnesium oxide are produced from your chemical equation here, you would have released 1204 kilojoules. But since we're saying we're only releasing this much, we have to account for that by using this relationship. So kilojoules of energy cancel, and now I'm left with moles of magnesium oxide. Now I use magnesium oxide's molar mass which is going to be 40.30 grams for every one mole and that is how many grams so I simplify and I get 16.3 grams of magnesium oxide letter D How many kilojoules of heat are absorbed when 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide is decomposed into magnesium solid and oxygen gas at constant pressure? So now I'm looking at this reaction in the reverse direction. So going from magnesium oxide this way towards my what were my reactants. So now they're going to be my product. And when that happens, according to our third helpful guideline, this is going to change into an endothermic process. So I start with my 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide and we have to get into units of moles of magnesium oxide. 
Lucky for us, our molar mass of magnesium oxide is the same as our starting material here. So our math is going to be much easier, and this should be grams. And now, here's the only tricky part of this problem. Since I am going backwards now, the reverse direction, I'm going to relate my energy to my number of moles of magnesium oxide from my chemical equation. Oops, excuse me, this is kilojoules. But now, it will be positive as you see here. So for every two moles of magnesium oxide from my chemical equation up here, I would, I would have released negative, or sorry, released 1,200, 12, 1,204 kilojoules. But since I'm going the opposite direction, it is now positive. So moles of magnesium oxide cancel. And I'm left with positive 602 kilojoules being absorbed if only 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide is decomposed, which is one mole. So, gentlemen, please take notes on this. This happens to be one of your problem set problems, so you're welcome. And uh, apply this to other problems that you may come across.